The first topic we need to cover in order to review simplifying radicals is to go over the perfect squares. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so forth. All the way through 12 squared. My best advice for you is to memorize the perfect squares. The second topic we need to cover is the square root of two numbers being multiplied together. When we have a square root and multiplication, we can distribute that square root to each term. So the square root of AB can be rewritten as the square root of A times the square root of B. When we have the square root of A divided by B, we can also distribute that square root into the numerator and to the denominator. So the square root of A over B can be rewritten as the square root of A over B. We will be using those two properties to simplify the following radicals. Example 1, the square root of 80. We first want to rewrite 80 as the product of a perfect square and another number. So we take a look at our list of perfect squares and we find the biggest perfect square that divides 80. If we look at our list of perfect squares, we can start with 64. And keep going down until we find a perfect square that divides 80. Sixteen is our biggest perfect square that divides 80. So we're going to rewrite 80 as 16 times 5. Since we've rewritten 80 as the product of two numbers, we can distribute that square root to each term. The square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Which is nice because we know the square root of 16. 16 is a perfect square. The square root of 16 is 4. And 4 times 5 times the square root of 5 can be written as 4 square roots of 5. The square root of 80 in simplified form is 4 square roots of 5. Looking at example 2, example 2 is really 5 times the square root of 20. We need to first simplify 20. We need to find the biggest perfect square that divides 20. Well, I know looking at my list that 4 divides 20, which means we can distribute that square root to the 4 and to the 5. And we know the square root of 4 is 2. That's why we picked a perfect square. Now 5 times 2 is 10 times the square root of 5. And our final answer is just 10 square roots of 5. Example 3. 2 square roots of 3 times 4 square roots of 12. The operation between the 2 and the square root is multiplication, and the operation between the 4 and the square root is multiplication. So we really have something times something times something times something. Multiplication is commutative, which means we can change the order in which we multiply and still get the same answer. So I'm going to keep the 2 first, and I'm going to keep the square root of 12 last, but I'm, I'm going to switch the order of the middle two terms. I'm going to switch the order of 4 and the square root of 3. So now I can take 2 times 4 and get 8. But now I need to work on 
the square root of 3 times the square root of 12. If I look back at my example, when I have two square roots being multiplied together, I can go the other way through my equal sign and rewrite it as one square root. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 12 can be rewritten as the square root of 3 times 12, which turns into 8 times the square root of 36. And 36 is nice because it's a perfect square. We know the square root of 36 is 6. And 8 times 6 is 48. The last two examples that we're going to go over involve fractions. If we look at example number 4, we have the square root of 7 twelfths. And if we look at our properties from the beginning, whenever we have the square root of a fraction, we can distribute that square root to the numerator and to the denominator. So the square root of 7 twelfths can be rewritten as the square root of 7 over the square root of 12. Now in math class, there's a rule that we always have to follow. We never want to have a square root in the denominator. So we need to do a technique called rationalizing the denominator. To rationalize the denominator, we need to take our fraction and multiply by 1. But not just any 1, 1 over 1. But not that 1, this 1. Where did the square root of 12 come from? Well, that's our denominator. So we're really multiplying by 1, but we've just rewritten 1 as the square root of 12 over the square root of 12. To multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. Which turns into the square root of 7 tw times 12 over the square root of 12 times 12. 7 times 12 is 84, and 12 times 12 is 1. 44. So how come we still have a square root in our denominator? Well, if we look, 144 is a perfect square. So we have the square root of 84 divided by 12. But 84 can be broken down into a perfect square times another number. So we need to break down 84 into 4 times 21. I can then distribute that square root to the 4 and to the 21, which turns into 2 square roots of 21 over 12. Now if I look, I have a 2 and a 12 that are both outside of the square root. I can simplify 2 twelfths into 1 sixth, and I keep the square root of 21. Now I don't need that 1 there, so my final answer is the square root of 21 over 6. The last example we're going to cover involves a fraction times a fraction. Step 1, distribute the square root to all the numerators and all the denominators. Now we really just have a fraction times a fraction, which turns into the square root of 15 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 8 times the square root of 4, multiplying our numerators together and our denominators together. Now simplify our numerator into one square root, and simplify our denominator into one square root, and perform the multiplication. Now at this point, we need to rationalize the denominator.
the denominator in this case is the square root of 32, so I need to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 32, which turns into the square root of 45 times the square root of 32 over the square root of 32 times the square root of 32. When we multiply the square root of 35, 45 times the square root of 32, we can rewrite that as one square root, and we can rewrite our denominator as one square root. Perform that multiplication. 45 times 32 32 times 32. 1,024 is a very big number, but if we look at how we got 1,024, we got 1,024 by taking 32 times 32. So the square root of 1,024 should be 32. If we look at our numerator, we can rewrite 1,440 as 144 times 10. And I know that 144 is a perfect square. Distribute that square root to both terms. I end up with the square root of 144 times the square root of 10 all over 32. which turns into 12 times the square root of 10 over 32. 32 divided by, or excuse me, 12 divided by 32 can be rewritten as 3 over 8, and I just need to take a, tag on the square root of 10.